article opens with a classic fairy tale introduction, returning us to childhood and fantasy. We immediately subconsciously think about love and happily ever after. Fantasizing love begins at an early age for many of us. We love the idea of love. Using this opening is mentally preparing the reader for a story, which is scientifically proven to be the most effective way to understand, comprehend, and retain information. The two people introduced to us are the main characters of the article, whom are renowned for their work in psychology, research, and divorce prediction. Combined, they are the founders of the Gottman Institute, in which the Gottman Method is now known for its work in the science of love. The sentence here really stroke my interpretive lenses because conflict is something I can most definitely relate to. I've seen and experienced firsthand how conflict can be a strengthening factor in any relationship, such as my parents who are married for 23 years, going through numerous struggles from losing a child to now coping with my dad's terminal cancer. Struggles such as these have made my family stronger. Meanwhile, this paragraph highlights the couple's relationship as they remember it, which is affected perhaps by emotional biases because emotional importance plays a big role in shaping our memories. Two filters occur in the delivery of this story. First, the couples they choose to tell their story, and then the author she chooses what information she focuses on in relation to her topic. The author incorporates context into her writing, giving credibility to the research behind the Gottman Method and one of the subjects of the article, Dr. John Gottman. Along with the mentioned awards, Dr. Gottman has researched marital stability and divorce prediction for 40 years, and his resume is extensive. The author immersed herself into the experience, which shows dedication and value to her writing. She expresses for the first time what could impact her interpretive lens, which is that of having love problems of her own. She comes with perhaps an expectation to find answers, a purpose to solve her problems, and a bias towards herself and her experiences. This paragraph here puts context into the article, providing other perspectives on the topic of love, looking at some of the historical lenses in Arab cultures and Chinese cultures, and what happens when you fall in love. It's shown as being tricky, giving an emphasis to the science of love. Here the author uses a strong word choice, describing people as fickle, very individual. Perhaps this inflicts the bias of the author to be slightly skewed, perhaps reflecting a negative experience in a past relationship in which she was let down. My interpretive lens biases this interpretation because I'm assuming what caused her word choice was based on my own past experience of being let down or disappointed by people. The author is honest here, telling us exactly what she sees and how she sees it. She's startled by the honesty shown to her, both in words and in action. Her prior experience may lack this openness, and so it surprises her. She expresses this sh show and not tell by expressing the scene in short, abrupt sentences. I'm aware that based on my biases towards love, I would have combined more short and long sentences because while the honesty might have surprised me, I would have been comforted by it. I would experience warmth in this kind of environment. The author's interpretive lens reflects a bit more here. She states her experience and how it allows her to relate to the research she's doing and how she can apply it to her own relationship. The author's point of view is that of being in a relationship, which gives her a different perspective of being a single person or a married person, and also looking at being in a long-distance relationship versus being physically together. Though the author expresses her search for the answer to her problems in brute honesty, she doesn't try to sell an answer to the readers. Her approach, though with her own interpretive lenses, is not skewed as she more so presents information to strike the curiosity of the reader to do more research. If she were selling anything, it would be the Gottman's dedication to each other and helping others. The author describes her experience in the Gottman exercises, and this perhaps overshadows facts for feelings. However, this is like that of a memoir, therefore facts are truly the experience of each individual. The author definitely did her research through both immersion and observation. As she discusses these in more depth, I did become more curious about the Gottman method. Having been called a hopeless romantic, my interpretive lenses made me very open to the ideas presented and perhaps enforced confirmation, psychological, and emotional biases as I am a firm believer in the power of love and very curious about how to make love work. After doing more research, I was able to mitigate my own biases because the context affirmed the Gottman method with credibility and various perspectives. There are thousands of self-help books presenting the one and only answer. This goes for everything from diet to fitness to mental health to schooling to religion. I experienced this when I decided I wanted to be homeschooled in fifth grade. Everyone thought I was wrong. Hearing there's one answer makes me very skeptical. 
However, the voice and delivery of the article didn't seem to have this intent, and so I was able to mitigate this bias through open-mindedness. This concluding portion emphasizes the purpose of the article, but also seemingly contradicts it. Though there is science involved, and we can have developed various methods which work for different contexts, no novel, one-size-fits-all method has been found, and both the author and the Gottmans are perfectly okay with letting magic coexist with science.